What's good guys, Chris Jenkins here. This is episode six of Off The Kit and I gotta tell you, I'm really happy. I'm in a good place because I'm back to playing drums again. If you've watched my YouTube channel, been following my videos, I've just uploaded my first video back playing drums and I gotta tell you, it's an awesome feeling. It's been over four months, one of the most challenging periods in my life, simply for the fact that I've never taken more than three or four weeks off in about 12 years of playing drums. Um, so I'm just really happy to be back and it feels so good to get those ideas out to just express all the things inside, the emotions, everything. Um, you know, it's one thing to be able to just tap at home and play on pillows and pads, but to play on acoustic kits, just one hell of a feeling. So. I'm ecstatic, just, you know, I, I really thought I would be a lot rustier than I seem to be. I obviously found that I was fatiguing a lot quicker. My, <clears throat> sorry, my double strokes also weren't where I feel like they were, obviously, but, you know, that I'm sure that'll be back within a, a few weeks of practice, probably. But, yeah, I just, like, I'm buzzing, I'm buzzing. I, I have so many video ideas and I plan on doing so many more lesson videos because, you know, I really realized in retrospect that's something I could have and probably should have done more of because it's just something that helps a lot of people. And I know, and I've said that I'm not the most theoretical person. I'm not great when it comes to transcriptions and music theory and, you know, knowing every subdivision and polyrhythm again theoretically um i'm more just one to play those things but not quite know what i'm doing so you know for me lesson videos can be one of the hardest things because when i play it's just sort of on the spot and fueled by intuition and i guess just motor patterns so for me to actually sit down and break break down what i'm playing can be quite challenging at times but always super rewarding and considering that it helps a lot of people and I guess gives clearer insight into what I'm actually playing uh, that's just something I want to do more of and it's also evident just in terms of the views and the engagement that those lesson videos I've done get because just a lot of people are like please do more please do more I get those dms all the time so it's just been a real kick in the ass to do and now that I can play drums again Oh, I, yeah, definitely. And I also want to improve the style of my lesson videos. I don't know, maybe just with like different camera angles and who knows, maybe like actual annotation or like transcription, because I can probably just do that through Logic Pro. Um, I don't know. I've always just done it the sort of way that I do with the like R, L, L, R, and then kind of throw the accents on top but I but I've understood through certain comments that it's not always super clear because it you know it might be played in a triplet feel or straight feel so um yeah I don't know we'll definitely see but now that I can actually play drums again I can't wait to just start recording a bunch of new drum content and try take it to new places and just continue to develop my videos and the content you know that's something I've tried to do consistently and I think is evident through my sort of catalog or archive of videos um, that they just improved over time. So yeah, just, you know, I'm always envisioning what could be and with my videos and content, I can just see so much room for potential improvement and, and just to be able to, you know, I spoke about this in the last episode, just to be able to offer more and more value, to be able to help others more than just sort of selfishly recording my own practice sessions and just putting them out there. Um, although I understand that could be entertaining to people. And I guess that's kind of the place I've come from um, mentally, I guess, when I do it. Although it's also kind of just for my own sake and reflection, it, it kind of just ends up being more of this simple cut form of entertainment as opposed to Again, something a bit more fruitful, something that people can take more away from. So, um, yeah, just definitely plan on doing a lot of my regular practice uploads or uploads where they're just sort of snippets of my practice, but to also do a lot more lesson stuff. So, yeah, but yeah, like, you know, I was saying in the previous episode, I, 
I want to record these podcasts probably every couple weeks because I feel like I need to have sort of accomplished or improved upon things so that I have more to talk about episode to episode. And I've also stated, which is evident that I'm not always the best at rambling on the spot. So I don't know. I'm just rambling now as we speak. I've actually been listening to metal more recently, which is kind of strange because, I mean, if you follow my stuff, then I've you might know that I've been a big metal head for many, many years. It's a genre and style of music that has gotten me through immense periods in my life and has just been one of my most, hmm, it's been one of the music styles that's resonated with me the most and just been probably one of the most therapeutic styles of music. I, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but maybe it's just something that a lot of metal heads, I guess, relate to, but, you know, being a quiet kid and somebody who went through a lot of depression, metal was always just a genre of music that felt like it just channeled my emotions. So I don't want to say accurately, I guess, uh, for lack of a better term, but it was just something that really resonated with me. And so it's something that I kind of naturally gravitated towards. And I guess also being sort of an angsty teenager, wanting to have, you know, experience a more extreme style of music or sensory pleasure, I suppose that was sort of one of always one of my main outlets. And I mean, it developed over the years into a more genuine passion and love for the for that style of music. Um, I became a lot less off put by the screaming and all that. Um, But I completely understand why people aren't into it because I'll never forget listening to Faint by Linkin Park and always thinking that that was just hor- like one of the most horrible sounds and it sounds like he's choking on something and why would someone listen to this? But over the years, <laughs> it's funny because that progressed into listening to bands like Whitechapel and The Faceless and Thy Art Is Murder. So a lot more, you know, just heavier music. So it's funny to see that progression happen but my point being that actually in the last probably two three years I kind of fell off of metal and maybe it came from now I don't know which came first because I kind of stopped playing metal on drums because that was always my main uh, drumming style I suppose for many years but it became a bit too sort of one-dimensional for me I'd say again over the last like two years and I found myself going deep into genres like hip hop and kind of back to just things like funk and pop and uh, kind of funky rock, I guess, fusion Um, genres that I found a lot more freedom in and that I could explore and solo over. Whereas, you know, with a lot of rock and metal music, the set drum parts. So I would always have to learn those parts specifically, which was always a really fun challenge in of itself and really pushed me to my limits in terms of speed and you know I was able to grow a lot from that but then it sort of I think after a while became a bit repetitive to me playing just fast skank beats and blast beats and just double pedal it was just a lot of the same things and the transition to playing more again just I guess other music outside of metal not so much like country and swing jazz and traditional jazz, but most genres, pop, some electronic, again, funk, modern, contemporary jazz, I guess, fusion stuff, uh, just allowed a lot more freedom. And if anything, like uh, practically, I would suppose even just hi-hat work, because with metal, you play with double pedal so much, you, or at least I found this for myself, I... I didn't realize how much that sort of affected my my hi-hat playing in terms of opening and closing and keeping like the stomping going or the hi-hat chicks, whatever you call them, just whilst I was playing because I was so used to always having my left foot on the other, like the double pedal. So um, that was a transition that really forced a lot of growth. And obviously it's a really broad category and um, a wide range of musicality I guess but it it just felt like a nest not only necessary but just something that I again kind of naturally gravitated to um it seems like 
you know, I've mentioned I have kind of an extreme personality, but when I get really interested in something, I sort of end up really deep diving, going all in. And I feel like metal is just another one of those things. And not just another one of those things, like to demean it. Again, I love metal, but it was one of those things where I just ended up going so deep and really honed in on that craft for so many years. And I think I accomplished a decent amount or I wouldn't call it accolades, but in terms of, I guess, <laughs> speed is probably one of the main measurements. I think it, you know, undoubtedly within metal, I got up to playing like maybe close to 230, 240 beats per minute, I believe 16th notes. Um, yeah, there goes my horrible theory. Um, on the double pedal with my, just my point being, I got pretty fast and decent at metal in my opinion, but then that sort of just shifted and then hip hop became the next style for me. And considering a lot of the drummers I really idolized were, you know, a lot of the chop guys, whether it was Aaron Spears, Chris Coleman, a lot of gospel drummers, but then that developed into finding other drummers like Devin Taylor, Mike Mitchell, um, Rico Nicholas, I think is his name, but just tons of, a lot of gospel dramas basically. And I wanted to emulate that style. And because it was, I would say more, maybe more intricate, flashier, I suppose you could say, just different from metal. And so that really intrigued me. And, you know, I've gone pretty deep into that kind of style of drumming i guess not necessarily music but drumming in pre in the last couple years obviously with my own i guess flavor and twist and attempt to develop my own voice uh through that i guess channel or mode of playing but um yeah what was my original point yeah that i've actually found myself listening to metal more recently that's what i was trying to get to which is kind of funny because I haven't been listening to it much in the last two years and I don't really know why that is. It, I, I guess one theory I had was that it just wasn't, you know, in relation to why I gravitated towards metal music initially was that it matched my emotions at the time and that just didn't feel like where I was at, I guess, emotionally in the last two years. So I hadn't been listening to it and maybe just being a bit bored of it in terms of drumming, but still loving metal and appreciating it. And it's a huge part of my life. I just haven't been playing it a lot recently, but I found myself listening to it a bit more recently and I've been loving it. It's just been nice to have that energy. And I think more than the energy, also the, the melancholy and the nostalgia and listening to songs by bands that I always loved, whether it was, like Veil of Maya or Periphery or August Burns Red, bands like this or Silosis, definitely one of the biggest ones for me. The Conclusion of an Age 2008 album, one of my favorite metal albums of all time. But listening to those songs again, it just air drumming and bringing back those memories, um, just been really cool. But I don't know. I'm still I'm still mostly listening to hip hop. <laughs> it's definitely. Well, not, not a guilty pleasure. I just, I don't know. I love hip hop and I've actually found it to be quite similar to metal in terms of what I get out of it and the feeling, which I think a lot for the most part is the energy and the drive. And, you know, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't always have to be super lyrical and deep and meaningful, although I love that kind of music, but, you know, sometimes you just want to feel good and hip hop's done that for me. And if I'm doing something like working out or working on new content or just doing more menial tasks, I enjoy just having hip hop tracks in the background. So yeah, I don't know. You know, I just, I guess to tie it, tie the knot on this topic, I guess is that I thought about the fact that now that I'm enjoying metal more again, I wonder if that will lead me to more metal drumming again, because I've taken a few years off and having posted a few old metal clips from when I lived in Holland and I was really deep into playing metal, um, people like, well, I get kind of two comments. There's the one from people who have followed me for a while who are like, Chris, you got to bring the metal stuff back. Please do more double pedal drumming and things like that. And then the other one's like, 
oh damn, I didn't know that you played metal <laughs> or that well. So I don't know, that's really cool and kind of encouraging. So who knows, you know, I just kind of want to go with what my heart feels and just what feels right. But that would be kind of interesting if I go back into full on metal blast beats and do a 180. I feel like it would catch people by surprise potentially, but who knows, who knows. Um, yeah, I guess to be honest, the main thing I just want to talk about or try to talk about is the fact that I can play drums again. Another thing I've wanted to do and was, was in the midst of setting up more of previous to the lockdown was more drum sheds and playing with other drummers because it's something I absolutely love to do. And I realize that there's so much potential for growth, being able to share ideas and sort of trade, trade ideas back and forth you know, work off of each other's strengths and weaknesses to imitate each other, the call and response aspect of it, and also just to hang with other drummers who essentially speak the same language as you, right? It's just, it's just such a fruitful thing as a musician, as a drummer. It's, and, and, and because drummers aren't obviously, I guess, as common as vocalists and guitarists, so you know, and love for the bassists as well, because they're not super common. And, you know, there's definitely that just awesome relationship, musically speaking, between bassists and drummers. So I'd also love to do a lot more jams with bassists and record that. But, you know, I want to start setting up drum sheds again soon. Uh, it's a bit difficult at the moment, obviously, with the distancing and stuff at the moment, that's still, still important. But <clears throat> Yeah, I just I really want to play with other drummers and just get back into the swing of things. No pun intended. Just it's so nice to be able to play drums again. I kind of feel like a I don't know what's the right analogy. Just like a kid in a candy store and I just want to do all these things and um yeah, just fulfill all these sort of plans I've had to do drum sheds to record these kinds of videos to do lesson videos to maybe do more double pedal stuff again and now that I'm able to play again, but you know, still have responsibilities and, and limited time. And I'm working a lot on just a lot of content planning and the YouTube videos, and I guess the podcast and other things like that, then, you know, it's just something for me to sort of organize and slowly prioritize. But, you know, I think we'll get there. And I can't wait to see uh, those, the drum sheds and things that end up happening. Um, the lesson videos, drum sheds, kind of feels like the main thing. Um, what else? You know, it's also, it, it really feels that, you know, now that there's a lot less restrictions, at least here in the UK for the whole situation that we've been in these last few months, it really bothers me that you can't just say the word, you know, the this pandemic it's really weird in terms of monetization i don't know if you guys know just a little side note with youtube and stuff you get demonetized just for saying it which is a whole other conversation i don't really want to get super deep into but just in case you're wondering when i reference this situation it's it should yeah it's kind of obvious sorry um but it's funny because in reflection and looking back at these podcast episodes you know this is episode six now but that I feel like I see and can feel the change that has happened in just these last three, four or so months where I've been even recording these podcast episodes. I think in the episodes, it's, it's not necessarily, you know, a completely accurate reflection of me because obviously it's a very limited, although a longer form of audio video of me talking and sort of trying to be authentic because I don't want these to be edited. But um, my point just being, I think the change in my personality and lifestyle maybe has been evident. Um, the first few episodes, I was in a state where um, just felt a little bit more aimless and was, you know, a bit down about obviously not being able to play drums. But I think more than that, also, you know, not not being able to see that sort of I mean I could see the light at the end of the tunnel I felt like obviously it didn't feel like this was going to last forever but just not knowing when was I guess a bit scary because I'm someone who is very future oriented and I 
I have all these sort of grandiose plans and visions for things I want to do and accomplish and to just be sort of lost in this chaos and not knowing when or how or you know I would go about playing drums again doing the things I wanted to to do with drumming and touring and things like that it just it, it is a bit chaotic and I think that sort of sent me into a bit of a spiral of doubt and pessimism and considering I'm generally a very optimistic person but that yeah it was just challenging in that sense I guess psychologically obviously not being able to play an instrument is you know <laughs> really not the end of the world in the grand scheme of things but yeah for my own I guess well-being and psyche it's obviously a huge part of my life and I've, I've talked about this a lot so I don't want to keep beating a dead horse but yeah I've just I've I feel like I've hmm just so much change has happened and I really realized that you know that there's a lot about this situation that's maybe even been quite essential and had it not been for it, you know, who knows, I probably wouldn't have even have started, I most likely wouldn't have even started this podcast or really gone in on the YouTube videos and, you know, going in on the YouTube videos because I want to be able to help people and more so through insight because I, f I almost feel, I don't know what the ratio is, but I feel like I can offer a lot more value potentially or at least a lot of value through the videos where I'm explaining my experiences and trying to give insights and advice as opposed to just the playing side of things again because I'm not necessarily an educator type of musician I feel um, this is definitely a great platform for me to help others and musicians I guess drummers more specifically so it, it really helped it was a time where I mean, I guess it's still sort of that time, except I can play drums again, but not being able to play drums and having so much downtime really allowed me to see things a bit more clearly. Maybe not initially because I was so lost in this sort of, again, whirlwind of chaos, if you will, but it was just a chance for me to sort of take a step back and I guess for most of us, take a step back, reevaluate my goals and re-strategize what I can do and how you know what I can make out of this situation and I always try to do that I tend to be pretty stoic and if there's one thing I've learned and I guess also intuitively I guess it's just a human thing but to make the most out of your situation and things that are out of your control are not worth your time and energy and in and in giving up your time and energy to things that are out of your control that kind of makes you worse off and less less reliable I guess to others so you know it's like you have to save yourself before you can save other people I don't know I'm just sort of trying to tie these things together but um yeah just finding that it was necessary after the first few weeks of I guess more I don't want to say well potentially destructive behavior but more just to my own detriment not necessarily to others but to myself and if anything overworking myself it's just led to burnout it just may be not be as useful to others that I as I could be and it was important for me to start to realize that and just say to myself you know I'm sick of this I've had enough I need to just straighten myself out this is the situation what can we do and that was when I started brainstorming and you know realizing that hey I could do a podcast this could potentially help people and and I guess selfishly as YouTube and any sort of content it's always nice for me just to be able to reflect on myself and my playing as a musician but you know also to take care of myself in terms of diet and sleep and routine circadian rhythm things like this and in doing so, that's just helped me become a better and stronger version of myself, which, you know, sort of has a compounding effect, I guess, right? When you do the right things, it sort of compounds and um, I guess it's sacrifice, right, for the future. You, you become more disciplined, which 
sort of limit yourself in terms of certain freedoms, but that pays off and almost gives you more freedom down the line. So yeah, I guess just these last few months have been an opportunity to just really sort of straighten myself out and hopefully for others as well. So I, it, would, it would just be really cool to see, I guess, and that's the thing, hmm, I guess I won't be able to see, but I wonder how much of what I do and what comes of my work in the future will be correlated or be sorry, I'm struggling to word this, how much of the things that I do in the future will be in correlation with the change that I've undergone through this point in time, these last few months, because of the situation, all these things that I've done and changed about myself in this time, what will that lead to, I suppose? I guess that's a pretty difficult thing to measure, obviously, maybe impossible, but yeah, it's just something I guess I'm grateful for and because it seems very necessary. We always obviously should be trying to improve ourselves. And although this has been a very tough situation, I can just see so many things that in retrospect, it has helped me improve. And that's an important thing to, I think, remind ourselves. I definitely need to do that more myself because I get so caught up in my vision and what I see myself doing in the projects. I... I would partake or create in the future, I get lost in sort of the now and the past and seeing what I've actually done. Um, it's kind of a weird thing. So it, I think it's been healthy and just good for me to have, try and create that balance. And I'm sort of reminding myself now as I speak, because usually when I speak, I'm just kind of thinking out loud, but to do that more because I can definitely be my own worst critic and well, I definitely am. And I can almost get down about that because I just never feel like I've done enough because I always know I could do more. But yeah, I don't know. I just struggle to find that healthy balance. But I'm just really happy to play drums again. <laughs> Sorry, it's just yeah, I don't know. I, I'm generally I'm just I've been in a much more positive mindset as of recently. And well, really the last few months, it's just been sort of, I guess, the what, March, March and April weren't the greatest months for me and maybe for a lot of people. But I think as we sort of got used to what the situation was, then that at least for me, that's when I was able to start making changes, focus on content and also realize how much I was actually capable. Apologies, the camera just cut off, but realizing how much I'm actually capable of accomplishing and when you really put your you know your mind to it as cheesy as it sounds you really can get a lot done and when you are able to sort of you know this one thing I think the situation has been able to teach me at least is that without the externalities you're really put to the test and if you really go for it you'd be surprised how much you can accomplish and I think for me again with having started this podcast, which is now on iTunes and Spotify. And, and, and I only say that because when it comes to the sort of techier side of things, or yeah, technological side of things like this, then I tend to struggle a little bit more and just doing the more menial things that you need to do. And logistical things that 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 stuff that always stresses me, I'm kind of a dreamer, I'm always in my head, I'm thinking. And thinking very deep about things and living in my head but you know it's been nice to prove to myself I guess how much I'm capable of doing in the more sensory world so to say uh, maybe that's something a lot of creatives struggle with I guess a lot of us are usually in our heads and always thinking and trying to create and be creative but you know that can be of detriment at times because you kind of need to ground your feet in reality every now and then guys <laughs> I'm saying that to myself though but yeah it's been amazing and and knowing that you know now I've been able to do this podcast put it on Spotify iTunes um, I've also signed up and have got this Amazon associates or affiliate thing sorted so now I can 
essentially monetize my videos through purchases or like people purchasing the items that I use and have put in my video descriptions. I get a commission, but doing things like that, the YouTube channel, trying to stay on top of the Instagram content, you know, it's quite a lot more than I was already doing, but you know, I'm at a point where now uh, this still isn't quite enough or, or that, not that it's not enough, but I'm, I know that I'm still capable of doing more. Whereas before I wasn't maybe even sure that I could be doing all this. I guess that's just growth and maturity, but yeah, it's really cool to just be awake to the fact or be more mindful and aware of what you're currently accomplishing and how much more you can accomplish and sort of just how much your, I guess, capacity for accomplishment can increase. So it's probably not the best way to put it, but um, I guess that's just growing up, maybe. But yeah, it's awesome because now I'm doing the YouTube, doing the podcast, doing the Instagram. It's like three platforms as opposed to just Instagram. And I plan on doing a lot more. I think I mentioned in the previous podcast. I also plan on releasing lesson packs where I maybe do like 50 or 100 drum fill lesson packs. Um, they won't be expensive at all. They'll be on my website. And, you know, that's something I realize I'm completely capable of doing. And whilst I do all this and work and more because I want to do more and keep pushing to do more and I, I want to be very careful of burning out because I have experienced that many times because I tend to do that. I go all in and then I crash and I burn. And if anything, it slows me down a lot more in the long run because I have to take longer breaks off of, you know, consistent sort of productivity. Um, and when I say productivity, I don't mean just being busy for the sake of being busy, but I, yeah, just accomplishing things. So I know it's self-explanatory, but but um yeah what else do i want to talk about it's weird i didn't really know what i was going to talk about in this episode i mean i had one or two notes but the main notes was just the main note was just that i could play drums again and i wanted to express how happy i was about that and i really am and that i plan to do a lot more lesson videos and just thankful for all the lessons that I've learned in the previous months and, you know, how that will help shape my future. I'm just very grateful for that. So, and yeah, listening to metal again. So I'm trying to recap if there was anything I was missing. I could have sworn there was maybe something else I wanted to talk about. I guess other than that, just that I'm extremely grateful for the people ha who have been so supportive and encouraging to me. Um, it's just all, it's, it's just all, uh, I can't speak. I think this is where we start wrapping things up. I'm just really appreciative of you guys who do support me and have said such nice things or encouraging things or even given me constructive criticism. I always really appreciate that because it's really nice to have an outsider's view on how I can improve things. Um, again, I get very caught up in my head and just doing my own thing it's nice to receive criticism so I always appreciate that as well and try my best not to take offense to it because it's necessary and yeah my podcast is on Spotify and iTunes probably not worth saying this at the end of the episode but yeah it is and I'm really happy about that if you're following the YouTube version of this then you can purchase any of the items that I use to record my videos, the microphone, the, the interface that I use. Um, I haven't put all my drums in the description yet. I might do that. Just let me know if you want to or want to know exactly what drums I have and symbols that I play with because I haven't made that super obvious. But yeah, um, the camera I use, the Canon EOS 650D. So, sorry, just all the equipment that I use, it's in the description and you can purchase it through there. I get a commission and that money will be put towards just upgrading gear for videos. And other than that, yeah, pretty much daily content on my Instagram. I could have sworn there's something else I was going to talk about. I guess not. I'm super hyped to 
continue doing the YouTube videos as well. I've been having so much fun and have plenty of video ideas. And also, if you guys have any suggestions or things that you want me to talk about, please do comment them below or send me a message. Uh, serious business inquiries, Chris Jenkins drums at gmail.com. Uh, my Instagram, Chris Jenkins on un, Chris Jenkins underscore drums. I think I have about a 60% success rate of promoting my own socials at the end of these. Yeah, I think that's it for episode six. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully it will be a more organized episode the next one and I'll have a bit more structure to what I want to talk about. In fact, now that I think about it, because I said I would do this, I'm going to probably, I'll do a QA and a in the next episode because I do Q&As on my Instagram stories, but that's not enough. It's something I need to introduce a bit more to my YouTube and the podcast. So if you also have any questions, please submit them. I'll do that next episode. I think because I want to, or I tend to want to elaborate a lot on questions that I get, I'll maybe only answer a few. Um, who knows? Maybe if they're simpler questions, I'll do a lot. But yeah, I think I'll do a sort of Q&A section at the beginning of the next episode. And... Okay. Yeah, that's enough. I'll see you in the next episode, guys. Thanks.